Oh hey YouTube, it's your boy Naughty and Sans here for another episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. As you can see, I spent weeks upgrading the office. I chopped down the trees myself, I cut up all the wood, sanded it, stained it, and put it on the wall. Just kidding, it's a vinyl decal. Anyways, super excited for today's lesson. If any of you watched that shitty Kevin James movie, True Memoirs of an International Assassin, you A, know that movie was a piece of garbage, but B, noticed that the text tracking and all the graphic elements in that movie were actually pretty dope. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to track text to moving objects, just like this. Ian, how did you get that shot? It's so clean. I have a Dana Dunley. But you don't need one of those to learn what we're gonna to learn today. All right, with that being said, open up After Effects because we are getting stuck. Oh, I got donuts this morning. They're so good. All right, open up After Effects because we are getting started. So I've got After Effects open and in my composition, I have that one clip of the table being tracked on the Dana Dolly, but there's no text in sight. Well, let's change that. So basically the After Effects tracker can work in two ways. You can track either one single point or you can track two points, but they have to be on the same plane. So today we're gonna be tracking two points. You guys can track one point, it doesn't matter. You can just experiment with this. Take the knowledge in today's video. I say this in every single video. Take the knowledge in today's video and apply it to your own project and make something super cool. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to layer, new, null object, and this is where we're gonna store all of our tracking data. Then you're gonna click on the clip that you wanna track, and basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is, you're gonna to wanna to first figure out where you want your text to appear. So on the, in this case, we're gonna have it appear on the top of this table. And then you're gonna to wanna to track as close to the point that your text is gonna be as possible. So because I'm gonna be tracking two points today, I'm gonna to go up here and go to track motion. And then you can see right here, there's another little button to put rotation as well. So I only have one track point to start. If I click rotation, it adds two track points. And then we're gonna put both of these track points on the same plane. Now the rule for After Effects tracking is that your tracking points have to be in an area of high contrast. So there has to be some dark with some light. So I think that we can go ahead and track just the inside corner cracks of this table. As you can see, it's really dark and the surrounding table around it is pretty light. So what we're gonna do is just kind of frame that up a little bit and we're just gonna track it right into that dark corner with the light table surrounding it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna hit this play button which says analyze forward. So let's do that, let's analyze forward. And it's gonna do its best to track those points as close as humanly possible. Now, it may not be exact, it may not be perfect, so you guys may have to do this a couple of times just to kind of see and experiment with what tracks the cleanest. All right, so as you can see, my, my second tracking point didn't track at all right there, so what we'll do is we'll reset this, and we're gonna try one more time. Except this time I'm gonna do the front line. So let's come in here. We're gonna do this front line instead of the back line. Let's see if that works a little bit better. All right, that seems to be a nice clean track. You can see that I have two straight lines because my camera movement was smooth. The tracking points stayed in the places that I wanted them to stay. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna to go to edit target and I'm gonna click on, make sure your null object is selected. Click okay, hit apply and X and Y okay and it will bring down tons of tracking points onto your clip and also your null object. You can just collapse these because you don't really need to access them right now. So now all of our tracking data is stored in this null object and that's exactly what we wanted. So let's come over here to where we know the text is gonna appear somewhere in this general area. So what we're gonna do is come in here and create a new text object and I'm just gonna write text tracking. We're gonna make this white. This isn't a flat object, right? It's kind of 3D, it's a weird axis. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the 3D layer on the text. So what that allows you to do, if you hit R on the keyboard, it'll bring up your rotation information. And you can kind of just start rotating this in a way that makes sense that it would be sitting on the table. So I'll actually scale this down a little bit as well. And I'm just gonna start playing with the rotation until I get something that I think looks pretty good. All right, that's looking pretty cool. Looking pretty good there. It looks like it's actually sitting on the table, which is exactly what we want. Now, in my example, I actually had a shadow that was coming off the back of the text just to give it a little bit more realism. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, duplicate this layer, change the text color to black. Oh no, mouse batteries are low. Hopefully we can do this without it dying. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this bottom layer 
down flat onto the table so that it looks like it could possibly be a shadow. So again, this is not an exact science. You will have to just kind of play with this until you get something that you think looks good. So maybe something like that, that looks kind of good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a blur to the text track, the shadow track at least, so it actually looks more like a shadow. So maybe we'll give it a 20% blur here. And then I'm going to click on the layer, hit T for opacity. I don't know why T is opacity, that makes no sense at all. And then we're going to just lower the opacity down to, let's say 40%. So now if we toggle this layer on and off, it is actually giving it some text, it's giving it some depth, so the text looks like it's standing up and it's casting a shadow on the table, which is what we want. Now, do not move your playhead during this time because then your, your text is not tracked to the null object yet. So before we do anything, let's quickly uh, select these two layers. So if you click on a layer and hold down shift, you can select multiple layers at the same time, then grab this little pick whip thing and you're just gonna drag and drop it right onto null three. And that's gonna tell these text layers to be looking to your null object for the tracking data so that the text moves along with all of your tracking information that we just did previously. So now if we were to render this or just play it through, you see that the text is now tracking to the table, which we did earlier, and it looks pretty clean, which is awesome. So you wanna get your text looking awesome in the frame, environmentally, with the shadows and everything before you do any animation at all. That way it pretty much guarantees that you don't have to step back or like double back on all of your efforts. So now that this tracking is looking pretty good, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and in about four seconds in, I'm gonna come up to effects and presets and I'm gonna type in typewriter. And if you just drag this typewriter effect onto your text on both layers and you select both, hold down shift, select both and hit U on the keyboard, it will bring up all the points that are animated on your text. So now you see the text will start animating in typewriter letter by letter as it moves across the frame, which is pretty cool. But I think that this is a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna grab these keyframes and I'm just gonna drag them over a little bit closer so that the text animates in a little bit quicker. And as you see, it's animating our shadow and our text at the exact same time, just to give it that little bit of added realism there. If I were to mute the shadow layer, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the shadow layers are really important. If I were to mute this, it just doesn't look as good. It doesn't look like it actually belongs in the frame, but as soon as you add that shadow, it just gives it a whole new level of, you know, actual realism, so to speak. I know it's not actually real, but it looks better. All right, guys, I hope this lesson was useful to some of you. I know it moved a little bit fast, but there are just a couple things to remember. Number one, when you start your motion tracking, make sure that you're tracking an area of high contrast. That means that there's an area of light and an area of dark, and that little area has to stay in the frame the entire time or else it's not gonna work very well. Number two, if you're using two tracking points like we did today, make sure that those two tracking points are on the same plane. In this case, it was the top of the coffee table. Number three, design your frame first. Make sure that it looks good in the frame, that it looks like what you want it. Add your shadows, make sure it looks environmental and awesome before you tag it to your null object and before you animate. And number four is just have fun and experiment. This doesn't have to be a super serious thing. You may fail over and over and over again, but if you keep trying new tracking points, you keep trying something different every time, you're gonna end up with different results and you're gonna land on something that works for you, I promise. All right, guys, keep the comments coming. Seriously, I will try to answer as many of them as humanly possible. Some of you asked me to do things that like I don't even know how to do, but I am trying to learn so I can help you guys out. So comment in the comment section below and make sure that you leave a reference video to what you're talking about so I can analyze it and and deconstruct it, and then I can teach you guys how to do it. If you guys want, you can follow me on social media, at Naughty and Sands, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I don't do any editing stuff there for the most part. It's just kind of my own personal social media stuff, but you can follow me if you want. I don't care. All right, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out last week's video, just in case you missed it. It's a good one, I promise. Uh, subscribe until you do. I'm just gonna eat this donut. Mmm. Shout out Sidecar Donuts, the best in Southern California. Oh. Until next time.